And for more insight on this Burberry case, we're joined by Danny Audi, partner with the law firm Finnegan Henderson, which is the largest intellectual property firm in the U.S. Danny, thanks for joining us tonight. Well, thank you, Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here to discuss this important topic. So as we saw there, English luxury brand Burberry is appealing against a decision by China's National Trademark Office to cancel its trademark over its house check patent, as it's called. What is the basis of the denial of Burberry's trademark? Well, China, like many other countries, is a use it or lose it country. Uh, to maintain a registration in China, you have to use your mark. And the challenge here against Burberry is that it hasn't been using its um, check pattern for certain leather goods. And the Chinese trademark office found that the evidence it submitted was not sufficient to prove use. and. Um, canceled its mark. Now, Burberry uh, appealed the decision. It will have an opportunity to present additional evidence to show that it has been using its mark in the Chinese market in an attempt to overturn the mm -hmm. decision. So how long can this legal battle drag on for? Because that house check mark is iconic with all that is Burberry. That's absolutely right, Michelle. It's an iconic mark. And fortunately for Burberry, it has other registrations in China for that mark, uh, including registrations that cover clothing. Its uh, mm -hmm. iconic scarves and trench coats are protected. Um, and the mark has been promoted extensively worldwide. And China recognizes protection for well-known trademarks, even if they're not registered. So for Burberry, it still has um, defenses um, and means for protecting its brand in China, uh, but this particular dispute uh, can last for several years if um, uh, the uh, decision um, is upheld. Um, Burberry can appeal to court in China, which could take a, a couple years for a decision. Now, even if the decision is upheld, what legal course does Burberry then have against people that are using its trademark. This particular case focuses on Chinese company Polo Santa Roberta. But given that fakes, and really good fakes, are so rampant everywhere, how significant is it to hold on to a brand anyway? Well, it, it, is, it is very significant to hold on to a brand, particularly one uh, like Burberry's Czech Design, um, which is, as you've said, iconic and um, has a tremendous uh, amount of goodwill and market value. Uh, Burberry owns, as I said, a registration for that design for clothing, so it can, it can still enforce its rights against infringements and counterfeits in the Chinese market. Uh, it can also enforce its rights to protect against um, others who try to register similar marks in China. Well, how difficult is it to prove trademark infringement in Chinese courts? Let's look at the Burberry example, f uh, at the Burberry trademark, for example. Polo Santa Roberto is saying, hey, it's a geometric shape, that theirs is literally like a couple of millimeters just more spaced out than the Burberry one. How difficult is it when you get into those types of shapes to prove that your brand is specifically yours? Well, China is, is similar to the United States in that respect. If the consuming public is likely to be confused, it should be considered an infringement. So. Mm -hmm. Minor variations in the marks shouldn't be sufficient where you have a mark like Burberry's check pattern, which is so well known uh, and so recognizable. Uh, minor changes shouldn't be enough to avoid uh, an infringement claim. Okay, Gucci, for example, is now losing its double G trademark in the UK in November. So Overall, what strategy should global companies be employing to protect their trademarks that they've spent so long in developing and ensuring brand recognition for? Well, there are really two fundamental things that companies uh, need to do. First, make sure that you are obtaining registrations for your marks in countries where you're offering goods and services, as well as countries where you plan to expand. And make sure that those registrations cover what you're actually doing. Uh, the second is to enforce your rights uh, to take action to prevent um, counterfeit products from being sold, uh, from infringing products from being sold, and from infringing trademarks being registered on the register. This reduces the amount uh, of uh, counterfeit and infringing products on the market, which results in a stronger trademark, which typically is easier to enforce. 
All right. Tough, tough industry. A lot of gray lines there. We're going to have to uh, leave it there. Thank you so much, Danny Audi, partner with the law firm Finnegan Henderson. We're taking